What indeed, my dear? That is the point. He goes to see her continually and stops there for hours at a time. And while he is there, she is not at home to anybody. Not that many ladies call upon her, dear, but she has a great many disreputable men friends. My own brother, particularly, as I told you. That's what makes this so dreadful about Windermere. Oh, we looked upon him as being such a model husband, but there is no doubt about it. My dear nieces, you know the Seville girls, don't you? Such nice domestic creatures, plain, dreadfully plain, but so good. Well, they're always in the window doing fancy work or making ugly things for the poor which I think so useful of them in these dreadful socialistic days. Mm. This terrible woman has got a house in Curzon Street right opposite them. Such a nice respectable street too. Don't know where we're going. And they tell me Windermere goes there for and five times a week. They see him. They can't help it. Uh, and although they never talk scandal, they, well, of course, they remark upon it to everyone. And the worst of it all is that I've been told that this woman has got a great deal of money from somebody it seems she came to London six months ago without anything to speak of. And now she has this charming house in Mayfair, drives her ponies in the park every afternoon and all, well, all since she's known poor dear Windermere. It's quite true. The whole of London knows about it. That is why I thought I should come and talk to you and advise you to take dear Windermere away at once to Hamburg or to Aix, where he'll have something to amuse him and where you can watch him all day long. I assure you that on several occasions, when I was first married, I would pretend to be very ill and was obliged to drink the most unpleasant mineral waters, merely to get Berwick out of town. He was so extremely susceptible. <sighs> but I am bound to say he has never given any large sums of money to anybody. He's far too high principled for that.